couple months ago, when I sent you a message when I got the press release that Killer Clowns is going to be at Universal Halloween Horror Nights, mm -hmm. what was your first reaction? Oh, I was kind of shocked. Because I thought, oh my gosh, what are they going to do with it? <laughs> and how come I didn't get a call? Uh, are they going to use the different music? Are they going to like, what's going to happen? Is it going to look different? Is it going to be... And so I sent an email to the Kyoto Brothers and I said, have you guys heard about this? Yeah, we heard it. They heard about it before I did. And I said, and they were kind of like, skeptical, skeptical about the whole thing. So, because you just never know. I mean, they didn't get a call on, we're hearing about it. And then little by little, uh, uh, you know, we started to get a little, someone would send me something from Orlando, maybe fans or something like that, and then all of a sudden pictures started to show up, photographs, because they would like put props outside and just like keep them out there. Sometimes they were covered, sometimes they were exposed, and they probably knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Probably doing it on purpose, so that little by little, virally the news would get out. And then finally when uh, they had some of the props set up ready to go, that's when a lot of pictures started coming out. And so I would, I would, you know, they would forward me stuff, I would forward stuff to the Kyoto Brothers. And then finally, like, the opening day. And it was really great because the uh, creative director, that it was his baby, his name is Michael Aiello at um, Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando, for Universal, uh, had a r wonderful um, selfie video that he made of him spinning around, showing everything to everyone. Says thank and thank thank you Kyoto Brothers for making this. This has been a dream come true. And I'm looking at like they brought Killer Clowns in our space alive, and people are having fun. And I'm listening. That's it's not only music from the original soundtrack. It's music from the brand new reimagined soundtrack. And I was just completely blown away by it. And so I just was just overjoyed. And so I didn't. So then I. Contact you. How are you guys with? It? Well, it looks pretty good. You know, we may go down there to the visit. You know, you should go down there too. And uh, so when I first heard the news, when you first heard the news, and I didn't know. I was skeptical, skeptical about the whole um, aspect mm -hmm. of it because you never know how something can change. Maybe someone that wants to have our summer. Maybe they get some artistic license, and you know, and uh, so that was. That's how it was. It was it. You know, I'm thinking it back on it when you first. I think you're the first person that broke the news to me, and I was just, you know, it was like something interesting. Wow, how is this going to develop? You know. Uh, now that you made the trip and yeah. you've seen it firsthand. Yes. What What did you think? Did they do it justice, or what? When you first saw it, what mm -hmm. was that? What was that reaction? What went through your mind? Well, when I saw, seeing it <clears throat> on social media is one thing. Mm -hmm. Being there in person, completely different thing. Because you see all the energy on social media. People, everyone with a smile on their face. Uh, some people running away, frightened. But it's a, it's a funny frightened. It's not like they're frightened in a, uh, act, like, like other scare zones where you're waiting for a jump scare or what have you. And, uh, and then, then seeing it in person is completely different. Um, one thing that really stole my heart is that I met a family, their 18-month-old uh, daughter took their first steps uh, at, at that scare zone, walking toward a killer clown. And then the plot thickens. The mom and dad, that's where they met like four or five years ago, at that, at, not the killer clown scare zone, but at the Halloween Horror Nights. And they got married and they had a child and what their child's first step is toward a killer clown from outer space you know i mean it doesn't get better than that <laughs> uh, what were some of the, the small details that you noticed uh, halloween horror nights is famous for small yeah. details for oh, the right. ips what were some of the small details that you noticed that other people may not when they're going through and getting chased by the clown? okay well uh one is with the ice cream truck mm -hmm. and the fact that the um the clown character on top is to me looks like absolutely the same as in the movie and it's even saying some of the same things because in the movie when it says uh, this is the great and mighty Jojo you will obey me and all that what that is like straight out of the movie and it's something that like terrifies 
the actual killer clowns, and that's what brings out the clownzilla. It's like, who dare question my authority, my, my reign, you know, sort of thing. So I thought that was cool to have in there. And I think it's, because of those little details, people that will discover the movie, you know, they'll see, hey, I like this, I'm going to buy the t-shirt. They go, well, there's a movie, I'll watch the movie. They'll connect with all, oh, I remember them. Now people will say, I, they haven't seen the movie, oh, I remember seeing that in the scare zone. I remember seeing that clown. Oh, so that's the shorty, the, the, the boxing clown, you know. And uh, I think, you know, that's one of the details that I noticed right off the bat that they got. Uh, the ice cream jack is the same. Pretty much all the uh, characters are there. They got, they really got Rudy right, in my opinion, because there's one, and I never knew his name was Rudy until some fans told me his name was Rudy. I knew Shorty was called Shorty, but Rudy, I didn't, he's like the cutest of all the clowns. You know, he's like the, uh, uh, kind of like, you know, he has a, you know, his ears droop a little bit, you know, and he, he's just a cuter clown. They, he, they got him spot on. The, um, the, the clown, the fatso clown, they got really good. The colors are like birthday cake colors, even in the movie, you know. Uh, oh my goodness, the cotton candy cocoons. They got that right on, they even got the same face as one of the characters, Joe Lombardo. Who they felt, oh my god, that's Joe Lombardo. <laughs> and there he was. I even, when I was there, I made a little video. Go, oh no, it's Joe Lombardo. We gotta get him out of this. Um, and uh, the clown girls are, were really, it was great that they had girl clowns. And the whole thing that they had between uh, the two Terenzi brothers, that they're both fighting over, you know, the tension of, you know, the clown girls, you know. Um, because they were just desperate for dates. They were just absolutely desperate for dates. And, and all the, the uh, scare zone actors know the plot. Where, you know, I was just dying to just tell them that, you know, this, is, this whole Killer Clowns thing is just a, um, a scam you guys dreamed up to sell ice cream out of this rented truck of yours, you know. And they, and they knew that. They knew what that was all about, you know. So it was a lot of fun. I felt like a little kid again. Uh, was was there any like were there any smells pumped in was there was it popcorn or was there cotton candy was there anything that drew you in further well you know that's that's really interesting because there were I can't recall what because uh, there's definitely a, a, aroma experiences uh, in everywhere you go in the park you're going oh that sounds kind of like pancakes and bacon and that smells like ice cream that smells like uh, Ah, oh, cinnamon buns, you know, I, and I think I remember smelling uh, like um, at one place um, macaroni and cheese with bacon, and I was getting hungry. Everyone was going, but at the Killer Clown Zones, yeah, there was very interesting smells. There was definitely a cotton candy smell. I remember that. I'm trying to remember. I want to say a, a smell like ice cream mm -hmm. because. We were near an ice cream truck, of all things. So they got that down, you know. That was and the music. I gotta say, uh, the the edit of the music track that they did was really good. They picked, uh, they made specific selections from the movie and uh, ordered them in a certain way, including the Dickies theme song. And there was a, a, a something I did called Muscle Car Clown. There's a scene in the movie where there's a clown that's driving suspended in an invisible car, right? And my goal, when I first saw that, I go, oh, I know what it is. Let's do some whacked out Dick Dale, like surfer music, you know, but more, and then with a little bit of Blue Oyster Cult thrown into it, you know, or something like that. Some kind of like wild, mad guitar solo, you know, and what's, really great is they use both versions. They use the original from the movie and the new one where I play, uh, I kind of play guitar, um, uh, a, a more wilder guitar version of it and uh, my friend Jonathan Padilla plays his bass and Bear McCreary not only plays the accordion but he plays the hurdy-gurdy which is a, a very odd instrument. It's kind of like a 
kind of like a violin that you you don't bow it it has a, a crank cylinder that constantly bows the strings and then you have like a keyboard almost like a keyboard configuration that uh, holds down the strings to, to to make the pitches right and it's really bizarre it's a, it's it's kind of like a, a weird violin of uh, uh, <clears throat> calliope sound almost and so they use that that's one of a problem that's a piece they place from start to finish and then they play the killer clown march also start to finish and there are some um, some of the orchestral uh, renditions of some of the uh, bigger scenes that are in there so I would say a total of maybe like eight or ten cuts or maybe even a little bit more I mean there's like 40 cuts in the in, in the actual movie but uh, they used just the right ones, and they're timed out just perfect, including the Dickies song. You know, it just and it just like everyone just starts dancing to it. It just had such a it had such a great energy to it, and I think people tune in on the color combination, and the fact that it's clowns. It's supposed to be scary, but it's not really scary. It's just weird, and bizarre, and funny, and creepy. You know, and all those things mixed mixed together. You know, it's like it's it's like. Um, an evil version of Dr. Seuss. I, I don't know how, how to how to put it. I, you know, I just hope they do it again. Uh, maybe expand upon it. Maybe make a, a haunted house out of it or something like that. That would be bizarre and wonderful. Uh, if they were to make uh, a killer clown's maze, what what parts of the film would you like to see represented? Uh, it's usually like you go through a house pretty quick, yeah. so you have to really pick key mm -hmm. points. What would be your three or four key points of the film that you'd like to see in there? Well, in the beginning of the film, they first discover that, like, oh, this is just like a weird circus tent. Uh, maybe this is where they make cotton candy. And then you open a door and you see a giant reactor that goes down forever. You know, I'm sure they, you know, practical effects people have a, a field day with that, with mirrors and stuff to make it look like, wow, that's like 10,000 feet down and that's 10,000 feet up and it's a giant it's actually a giant reactor of some sort you know and then uh, oh in the room with all the uh, cotton candy cocoons around and, and then lurking about are clowns that I mean it's it's like a no-brainer as far as that's concerned and then at the there's another part of the movie where um, I know that it was supposed to be a collection of all kinds of creatures from all over from different worlds and stuff like that that the guys walk through and then you have to be quiet and don't say anything and all of a sudden boom something comes up from the you know there's like a, a blast of smoke that comes from the ground like don't touch that button you know kind of, there's all that kind of stuff that you could uh, incorporate it's the scene where they say you know maybe our idea of clowns comes from ancient astronauts you know you know that sort of thing you know and then how come they're not funny <laughs> Um. <laughs> that was great. That, that's Peter Lucasi, <laughs> who, who I met at the at, at our concert. We had the, of the Terenzi brothers. We had the one Peter Lucasi, and he is still hilarious. He's got great comedic timing. He is just a, a very good public speaker too. I I wonder if he is considering doing stand up again. But he just hilarious. And th there was a lot, little lines that he had. In the movie, he says, you know, this is maybe our idea from of clowns came from ancient astronauts that visited us thousands of years ago. And he just says, well, how come they're not funny? <laughs> and it's just the way that he delivers that line. That oh, I first it's one of the lines I heard that and when uh, John Vernon, who plays the Officer of Immunity, said, uh, if I can get through Korea, I can get through this bullshit. <laughs> that just like made me laugh so hard. And that. I don't know if that was in the script. I think that was a line that John Vernon just came up with. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. But they said he really he really was in the spirit of the film. Uh, are there any other cult classic films that you think should get the maze or scare zone treatment in uh, Universal? Aliens. Is Aliens a Universal product? Or is Fox. that 20th Century Fox? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, but the, can they do Aliens? Aliens would be so much fun. And Predator, hmm. how cool would it be? Because don't you ever, don't you want to go to the Predator planet? Because mm -hmm. my theory is it's very hot. 
gravity is more intense for us because when they come here they basically float around so it's nothing and and then we might meet predator females which my theory my fan theory of predator females is they're like eight to ten times bigger than the males and the males have to fight each other to the death to see who's worthy in order to mate with the female and then after they mate with the female she eats them <laughs> makes sense don't you think they're like mantises or black widows exactly <laughs> right oh i've just okay you've i got what i need from you and i'm hungry <laughs> and now you're my lunch and they and then maybe something after they uh after the after the mating process the virile who we think are virile predator men just like become like go comatose because they know they're going to be eaten and their life cycle is now over so that's why they have to enjoy themselves as much as possible and go on as many many hunting trips as possible to prove themselves worthy to the female predators okay fox you got that